Hey, Danielle, I'm going to play those comments on race that were made by Donald Trump last night. I want to get your reaction on the other side. Take a quick listen. And then I got indicted a second time and a third time and a fourth time. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like me, because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. I mean, Danielle, that was one of several comments. He also, he being Donald Trump, talked about the fact that black people like the fact that his mugshot made it to a t-shirt because that's what black people like. I mean, you, you couple that with what Donald Trump said about black people in sneakers just a few days ago. And I, my, I, will, I will share this with you guys. I showed that to my husband. He thought it was a deep, deep fake. He's like, there's no way that man said that. Danielle, your thoughts? I mean, I, I wish that it was a deep fake, but the reality is, is that Donald Trump himself is a deep fake. He is a liar, he is a grifter, and he believes very little about black people and what they actually have to offer this country, right? That, oh, so long as you get arrested and you have sneakers, those are the things that black people are aligned with. I don't know how much more racist you can be than what Donald Trump has provided and continues to provide, but people like Tim Scott stand behind him grinning, so he thinks that somehow he is aligned with black people. There are people in this country who see Donald Trump for who he is. He is a racist. He is a bigot. He is telling you all of the quiet parts out loud, so you don't have to pretend or really figure or wonder, I wonder what he's thinking. I wonder what he will do when he becomes president. He's telling you he will be a dictator. He's telling you women can't have bodily autonomy. He's telling you he doesn't want people to vote. Pay attention. Right? Like all of the things that he is saying, he means and he will do. And the fact is, is that the Republican Party has thought very little about black people, don't care about black people, and don't want black people to be active participants in this country, period. So, Lucy, you've got Nikki Haley hanging on by a thread in her own home state of South Carolina. Her messaging to voters is, I could be Joe Biden in a general. I respectfully disagree with Nikki Haley, but realistically speaking, what's the best case scenario? Her name is clearly never going to make a short list for VP. Yeah, I think that what is important is to figure out what Nikki Haley is going to do when she inevitably does not get the Republican nomination. You're right. We know she's not going to beat Trump. And so what she does next is really what's important, because all of the other people who were running for the Republican nomination have fallen in line. You see people like Tim Scott out this week stumping for Trump and, and really behaving in quite an appalling way and, and, and just sort of being silent when Donald Trump said something like, you know, Tim Scott doesn't like talking about himself, but he loves talking about Trump. You can see how these people that even kind of like never Trump adjacent Republicans, sort of Coke world, folks like that, were pinning their hopes on, like Tim Scott, have all fallen in line with Donald Trump. So what is Nikki Haley going to do? We know she's not going to win the nomination. Is she also going to fall in line? And people in a position like mine, people who work uh, as never Trump ex-Republicans, never Trump Republicans, are really waiting to see. Because if Nikki Haley stays the course and she goes the way of someone like Liz Cheney and comes out and says, unequivocally, this man is a menace to democracy, he's an existential threat to the American way of life, she can have a very, very powerful voice in the 2024 election and hopefully beyond uh, if she doesn't, if she does the thing that we've seen so many of them do, which is just sort of be like, just kidding. Actually, I think he's a great guy. Let's all go, uh, you know, vote for Donald Trump. That will be very, very disappointing. And ultimately, I think that will make the progress that she's making right now and the, the powerfulness of her campaign at this moment all for naught. So people like me are really hoping that Nikki Haley stays the course in speaking out about the truth of this situation. Yeah, so Danielle, obviously this week Republicans are struggling with how to react to that Alabama Supreme Court ruling that frozen embryos created through IVF are considered children now under state law. Early in the week, Nikki Haley seemed to support that ruling, but then she later walked back on those comments. And listen, it's not just exclusive to her. The New York Times reporting Senate Republicans, the campaign arm is urging candidates to actually support IVF. I have to ask, did Republicans step in it again? That Alabama Supreme Court is all Republicans. We're now in 2024, decision 2024. Danielle, is IVF the next one-issue vote coming up in November? 
it's going to be IVF, Katie, and it's also going to be birth control. They are not stopping, right? Republicans are showing us exactly what a, you know, after Roe v. Wade America they want, right? And when you listen to that judge's ruling in Alabama, when he is talking and invoking biblical scripture and God and all of these things, what happened to the separation between church and state? Right? What happened to our ability to function inside of a democracy? They want a theocracy. They want white Christian nationalist rule. And so I don't care if Republicans today want to say, oh, IVF went too far, because what they are doing is just playing hide and go seek with who they really are for the voters. Right? We have seen every time that abortion, that reproductive health care is put on the ballot, they lose. And so people have to understand that what they are doing in Alabama, what they are doing in Texas and across these red states, they will nationalize if it is Donald Trump or if it's Nikki Haley who becomes, who becomes the next president. So, Lucy, while Donald Trump is racking up millions in damages, President Biden racking up wins this week, raising $42 million for his reelection campaign just in the month of January. Biden also announcing the cancellation of federal student loan debt for nearly 153,000 borrowers. What more should Biden be doing right now as he watches Trump and Haley battle it out? Well, I know that people may not like this answer, but I'm actually not sure that things like a focus on student loan debt is actually what Joe Biden should be doing right now. I think that Joe Biden should be talking to center and continuing to make the case that he is the person who's going to bring reasonable moderation to our political system, that he is the person who was going to deliver on the border bill, that he is the person who's uh, helping Americans get back to a way of politicking where both sides could come across the aisle and actually get legislation done and get it to his desk that he's willing to sign. So I think that all of these things are good. It's great to see those fundraising returns. But I think that Joe Biden should continue to stay the course to try to bring into the fold those people that we call double haters. Those are people who are disaffected Republicans or independents who, you know, don't really like Trump or Biden. But ultimately, we hope that they will come home for Biden in this election, as they did in 2020. So I think that's what he needs to be doing. And then stylistically, Joe Biden just needs to be Joe Biden. He had some great moments this week where he made jokes about his age. He he showed people that he knows how to take selfies on cell phones. And frankly, I think sometimes Joe Biden's team is playing three-dimensional chess where they're afraid that he's going to make a gaffe or that his age will become an issue. And when they run right into the things that Republicans are trying to make his vulnerabilities, that's really when Joe Biden is at his best. And I hope that we continue to see more and more of that version of Joe Biden as he ramps up the campaign trail.